This is a fairly common mistype. These are some things they have in common. They have the same functions, but in a slightly different order. They're both typically intellectual. They're both NT types, meaning that their intuitive function and their thinking function are the top two. And they both have issues with certain sensing and feeling functions. A lot of the differences between these two types can be understood by thinking of the introverted and extroverted functions as groups. INTPs have this group of TI and SI higher, whereas ENTPs have it lower and have NE and FE higher. This preference for the two introverted functions versus the two extroverted functions underlies much of the differences between them. Known versus new. ENTPs are explorers, and this isn't limited to the intellectual realm. They could just as likely be literal explorers too. INTPs are understanders, and this desire to know is similarly unlimited in its potential application. ENTPs reap the benefits of cross-pollinating different ideas, whereas INTPs reap the benefits of depth of understanding much more. This means that ENTPs are going to, sometimes in a pretty random way, look into many different areas and leverage that breadth of knowledge to find connections between seemingly unrelated fields. INTPs will typically go deeper into a topic and understand more of the nuance and details involved in it. In fact, a big difference between these two types is the tolerance for and enjoyment of details. INTPs have third slot introverted sensing, whereas ENTPs have it as their inferior function. INTPs are going to enjoy getting stuck into the intricacies of what they're involved in, whereas ENTPs are going to have much more of a difficult and contentious relationship with small details. They're going to strongly dislike the fact that a big plan or idea of theirs could be potentially derailed by a particular little detail. In their mind, that ought to be insignificant stuff. On the flip side of that, INTPs are more likely to get annoyed when someone overlooks or discounts the impact of small details, hence the stereotype of them sometimes being very pedantic. If there's an interaction between these two types, it's more likely that the ENTP will get annoyed at the INTP's constant need for precision. It would seem kind of unnecessary to the ENTP. In that situation, an INTP could come across Cross as very ISTJ-like. It's important to remember that when it comes to personality types, we are measuring traits not in isolation, but relative to other people. For example, every INTP is going to have a litany of unfinished plans and projects, but usually it's just nowhere near as much as the ENTP. Fluid versus fixed systems. ENTPs do much better in situations that are more fluid and flexible, whereas INTPs do much better with fixed and static systems. Again, it links back to ENTPs not needing that level of certainty that TI and SI in combination desire. INTPs like to build these rigid frameworks, and although, as I mentioned recently, this doesn't make the application of these frameworks rigid, they still nonetheless require a stable foundation to build from. INTPs are not going to like these situations where the rules of the game are constantly changing and moving around. It's probably why people can be quite annoying to them, since they seem so fickle and changeable in seemingly unpredictable ways. Hence the appeal to INTPs of personality typing systems, which offer the ability to take the complexity of human personality and attempt to classify it in a system, albeit in more generalized and archetypical ways. That is a deeply appealing idea to INTPs, that you have this static framework with these rules and principles that can obviously change and be updated, but ideally won't be if you've gotten your logic right. It needs to be internally logically consistent and also be applicable in a way that gets accurate results. ENTPs are much more likely, after learning a system, to get completely bored with it. Static to them is synonymous with stale and lacking excitement, whereas for an INTP it's kind of the other way around. Something that is constantly changing and is kind of ungraspable is going to get very annoying very quickly. Judging versus perceiving. Although they both have P in their name, ENTPs are a perceiving type and INTPs are a judging type. In practice this is going to show up as ENTPs seeking more perspectives, wanting new experiences, shaking things up, embracing change and chaos, getting bored with the known and the predictable, being reluctant to settle, whether that be geographically, in relationships, or in their intellectual conclusions. INTPs, on the other hand, like a level of comfort, predictability, routine, and certainty that can be in their living arrangements and day-to-day -day life, or in the principles and frameworks they construct to approach their life with. They don't have that much of a problem with coming to a firm conclusion with their opinion opinions and views. When they're being explorative, the point is still, ultimately, to figure something out, to get to the bottom of a thing. It's not exploration for its own sake, usually. They want to add a new nugget of wisdom or insight to their framework. They want to make some kind of judgment on a thing. So INTPs are going to come across as much more certain in their conclusions. Again, objectively, INTPs dislike it when people are too certain, but compared to ENTPs, they have much more firmly established views and values. ENTPs have introverted feeling, as 
has this so-called blind spot or polar function. As a result, they can be very out of touch with their own feelings and values. It's difficult for them to make a value judgment on something. The example I've used in the past is just to ask an ENTP what their favorite TV show is, book, historical figure, or even better, ask them what they think the best show is. You'll find that often they have a lot of disdain for the question itself. ENTPs are almost plagued by or cursed to see too many different possibilities and perspectives. So they simply find it difficult to sit comfortably on any one philosophy, belief system, value system. It's too easy for them to see the counter argument to everything. As a result, they tend to detach themselves from ever settling on anything. As soon as they put their flag down somewhere, their brain will instantly play the devil's advocate to themselves. They might get annoyed by the fact that they can then see the rebuttals to themselves. Ultimately, in some situations, they'll conclude that there are times where you have to take a principled stand just because you value the principle. That is often something they achieve when they have a lot of self-growth or maturity. Introversion versus extroversion. So this is one of the differences that isn't really that helpful. ENTPs definitely can be highly extroverted and social, but for every one of them that is like that, you're going to find an equally introverted one. Then you'll find this quite common and funny breed of ENTPs that need and desire being around people, but don't really like them. Similarly, there are INTPs I know that are extremely social and appear to be extroverted, so it's not really a useful distinction. Here are some broad questions you can ask yourself that might help you narrow things down. One is, do you like chaos? INTPs generally won't. They can often be very slow to take action and react to things, and chaos robs them of something very important and essential to them. The ability to take their time to analyze something slowly and deeply. ENTPs will often like chaos. It's because they have a competitive advantage in those situations. They need and desire stability much less. Obviously that can have drawbacks and often does for them since they don't always invest enough time in putting down firm roots. But still the capacity for chaos, the enjoyment of it, the benefits and drawbacks of it are a very noticeable difference between the two types. Here's another potentially interesting angle to take. ISFJ versus ESFJ. These two types are in the same quadra as ENTPs and INTPs, meaning they have the same four functions. As I've mentioned before, INTPs and ISFJs can be easily mistyped. No doubt there are many ISFJs out there that are mistyped as INTPs, mainly because the online tests have an intuitive bias and ISFJs are chronically underrated in the online descriptions. When you think of an ISFJ, some words that come to mind might be consistency, stability, having this sense of structure, especially as these types get older, when INTPs figure their life out a bit more and have more stability in general, these types can look very similar. So if you're wondering between INTP and ENTP, ask yourself, do I ever look like an ISFJ or come across like one? On the flip side of that, ESFJs and ENTPs can come across very similarly. If you can ever look like an ESFJ or often do, maybe in social situations, or you feel like you have a very strong grasp on how to use your extroverted feeling, if you feel very comfortable and calm meeting new people, putting them at ease, reading their social cues, if you feel like there are times where you're operating much more in a people-focused way, than a logically detached way, then you'd be much more likely to be an ENTP than an INTP. If you are one of these types, then you've probably already joined our Discord server. But if you haven't, please check it out below. And when you join, feel free to find me on there and say hi. One final thing that these types have in common is they both like hearing about themselves, which you'll get plenty of on this channel. So if a lot of people subscribe to this video and like it, then that's a pretty good and useful feedback loop for me to make more videos on you guys. Food for thought.